In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you about a few things, um, some of them being the LERP operator, how to get vertex colors into your shader that you've painted in uh, another modeling app, perhaps, and also how to use floating point variables and the constant color command. So let's go ahead and start talking about getting some floating point numbers into the shader and what you might use that for. So floating point number can, can come in as a property. Um, so this time we're going to define uh, with an underscore and then the variable name, um, similar to how we've done before, the, proper, the variable name that we'll be using within the shader itself. Then quotation marks, in parentheses here, uh, we'll be giving it a name that shows up in the inspector. In this case they match, but they don't have to. And then the type of the property. We're going to start off using a float. And then, of course, you have to define um, a default value. And it can be any number you want. It doesn't have to be between 0 and 1, but most likely that's what you're going to be uh, ending up using most of the time. So let's go back in here into the inspector and we'll see how that float shows up. So we have um, floating point number which you can drag around or uh, type in to change just like any other floating point number in Unity. Um, however, I find more often than not that it's more useful to be able to define a range. So instead of using the type property type of float, we'll use range. And you use the word range, and then you also have to define what that range is. Again, these numbers can be whatever you want, uh, but 0 to 1 is most common, uh, the most useful in most cases. So uh, we'll do that, and then we'll go back to the inspector, and now we'll see how that range shows up. So now we have a number. Uh, you don't actually see what number that is, but usually this is for visual tweaking anyway, so it's not exactly important that uh, you know what that is. Um, so, how do we end up, how do we use that number in the shader? Well, we'll use it with the constant color command, start off with. So, we see constant color down here. This is going to be inside of a texture stage so we need to def you cannot define constant color anywhere but within uh, a set texture block now there's no variable that just has the name underscore but that's what I use when I when I'm using a texture stage and I'm not actually using a texture in it you can put anything here that you want you could put an actual texture in here even if you're not using it in that stage but that's just my style because it's uh, the cleanest looking thing. You cannot just have empty brackets that will generate an error, so you must have something there. Do whatever you want. Okay, so you write the word constant color inside of the texture stage, and then the color either has to have three or four components, just like always. So we're going to use the variable number, which is a one floating point value, for the red and the green components and the alpha component and we're just going to leave the blue component at fixed right in the middle at 0.5. Unlike when we used the word color um, outside of the texture stage either in pass or in subshader we actually do need to use a combined constant in order to see that constant. If we don't um, and then we just go update our shader we'll see that there's uh, no effect being uh, seen from changing number. So, let's go ahead and uncomment this other line for now. Save this, and now, when we go back into Unity and change number, we'll see that we're adding yellow. Remember, the blue component is fixed, we're not seeing alpha, so basically this number slider is something like a, a ye add yellow slider. If that was all we were going to do, there would be no point in defining constant color like this. We could just use the word color, and then we could uh, have these parentheses exactly like that and have it look the same way. However, we're going to actually combine this constant in an interesting way with the vertex colors of the mesh. So vertex colors do not come in by default. You have to use what is known as the bind channels block in order to see them. Bind channels, you can uh, read more about that on the Shader Lab page called bind channels. There are several things we can bind. Uh, so one of them we won't need to worry about at all is tangent. Um, that's not used for fixed function shaders. And there's text chord, text chord 1, which are your UV coordinates. We'll get into that later. And normal is for lighting. So for right now, all we need to worry about is vertex and color. Vertex, what you do for that is you write bind, vertex, vertex. Again, this looks 
like nonsense to me because we're already in bind channels. I don't see why we can't just write vertex in here, but that's the way you need to do it again. Also, I don't see why you would want to use the positions of the vertices, which this represents. Um, so I don't know why we need to actually write that. But again, you do need to put this in. So anytime you have bind channels, anytime I've ever seen it, bind vertex, comma, vertex is what you will see. The first vertex is in uh, quotation marks. That means that you're taking the vertex positions from the mesh or any of these properties from the mesh and then you're going to assign that to something in the shader. So the vertex positions turn into the vertex positions. And this needs to match, color needs to match, normal needs to match, but text coord does not need, need to match. And that's what you'll do for using different UV coordinates in different stages. And again, we'll get to that in a, another tutorial. For now, all we need is bind vertex, comma, vertex, bind color, in quotation marks, comma, color, and then we can see the vertex colors of the mesh. So we will comment out everything else in the past for now so we can just see the vertex colors by themselves. So there are the vertex colors of this particular mesh. For the rest of this lesson, we'll be looking at ways to blend between the vertex colors of the mesh and a solid color, and we'll be utilizing lerp to do that. So lerp is a command that works with an alpha channel. So we're going to be using the alpha channel of constant. So in the middle of this line, you'll see the word lerp, in parentheses, some other argument. So to the left of lerp, whatever argument is there, is what you will see when the alpha channel is 1, or white, okay? And the argument to the right of lerp is what you will see when the argument in here, it's alpha channel, this is only the alpha channel, there's no RGB going on here, when that is 0. I just changed all of the RGB values and constant color to 1, so maybe this will be a little bit easier to understand now. So what we're going to do is blend to 111, which is white, based on the alpha channel of constant color which is uh, represented through number. So we're going to have no contribution of the uh, constant color when number is at zero. And when number is at one, it is fully uh, the constant color and there's no contribution of the vertex colors. And right in the middle, it's halfway. So that's now a blending slider. And as I said, the argument to the left is what you, is what you will get out of this texture stage when the alpha channel in lerp is 1 to the right it's when that alpha channel is 0 so what actually happens is that the argument to the left is multiplied by this alpha channel the argument to the right is multiplied by the inverse of the that alpha channel and they're added together if you haven't encountered alpha blending before or looked into uh, how that actually works it might sound a bit complicated but it's pretty intuitive it's exactly what happens when you're using photoshop and you use the opacity slider so in order to make this shader actually usable, we can define a property as opposed to having to hard code values for constant color. Uh, we do have a variable for the alpha channel, but not for R, G, and B. So if we are going to have a, a variable for the first three, we might as well just use a color and not use a, a range or a float at all because we have a slider in the op opacity control in the inspector. So we'll just go ahead and for this entire constant color we'll use the property of color and this name that we've defined is solid color and alpha equals blend because that's exactly what we're doing so in the inspector we now have a useful description so we'll go ahead and pick some color and we'll blend to that color based on the opacity slider the last thing I want to go over in this lesson is just the placement of your constant color definition we have constant color color and we had it before the actual texture combiner calculation. You can also put it afterwards and it won't make any difference at all. You can't put it in the middle of any of those declarations. You couldn't uh, go like this. But now we have an error and everything's magenta. But before or after is just fine.